Here's the process for dividing rational expressions. The steps for dividing a rational expression by a second rational expression, there's four steps. First thing we need to do is to multiply by the reciprocal of the second rational expression. You just keep the first one the same, change the division to a multiplication, and then take the reciprocal of the second fraction. Next, we'll factor the numerators and denominators completely. Third, we'll write it as a single rational expression, in other words, as a single fraction, by multiplying the numerators and the denominators. And then finally, we'll simplify by reducing ratios of common and or opposite factors. So here's an, an example. Divide, we have x squared over 2x plus 12, divided by 81x minus x cubed over x squared minus 3x minus 54. First thing to do is multiply by the reciprocal of the second rational expression. So keep the first rational expression, in other words, the first fraction as is, x squared over 2x plus 12. Change the division to a multiplication symbol and take the reciprocal, which means flip the second rational expression. So let's take the reciprocal here, which is uh, now x squared minus 3x minus 54 divided by 81x minus x cubed. Okay. That's the first step. The second step is to factor the numerators and denominators completely. So the first numerator, x squared, we could write that as x times x or leave it as x squared. I'll write it as x times x to help us see uh, how to reduce later. For the denominator, 2x plus 12, there's a common factor of 2 that we can factor out. So that will become 2 times x plus 6. And then for the second numerator, it's a trinomial. So uh, we need to give it a try and see if it will break down into two factors by creating two sets of parentheses. I'm thinking what times what is x squared, and that could be x times x, and now I'm thinking what times what is 54. And we need two numbers that are going to multiply to 54 that add up to, that multiply to negative 54 that add up to negative 3. So for 54, let's think of possibilities. Uh, 9 times 6 is 54, and I believe those two numbers do add up to 3 if we make it a negative 9 and a positive 6. So let's put a 9 and a 6 there. If we make it a negative 9 and a positive 6, we'll get positive 6x and a negative 9x, which adds up to negative 3x. And we also get the proper sign on the 54. Negative 9 times positive 6 is negative 54. For the denominator, uh, it's a two-term denominator binomial. There's a common factor of x. So let's factor out an x on the bottom. That leaves us in the parentheses with 81 minus x squared x times x squared is x to the third power. I'm checking now to see if all numerators and denominators are factored completely. The first numerator is, the first denominator is factored completely. The second numerator is factored completely, but the second denominator, we have a difference of squares which can be factored further. So let's keep the first rational expression here exactly as is. The first fraction, there's no changes needed. Everything's factored completely. But in the second, fraction here, the denominator can be factored one step further. The numerator is fine, as is x minus 9 times x plus 6. On the denominator, we have x times 81 minus x squared is a difference of squares. So 9 times 9 is 81, and x times x is x squared. With differences of squares, one sign is a negative and the other sign is a positive. Everything is now factored completely. So we're up to step three which is to write it as a single rational expression by multiplying the numerators and the denominators. So let's write this as a single rational expression or a single fraction. On the numerator here we have x times x times x minus 9 times x plus 6. In the denominator we've got 2 times x plus 6 times x times 9 minus x times 9 plus x. I just wrote it as a single fraction. That's step three, just expressing it as a single fraction, a single rational expression. The final step is to simplify by reducing ratios of common and or opposite factors. So let's take a look and see if there are any common factors that we can reduce. I see an x plus 6 that we can reduce there. Those divide, each, each, divide by each other and the result is 1. What else is in common? I see one of these x's we can reduce with that x, and the result is 1. Any other common factors? 
I don't see any other common factors. Now I'm going to look for opposite factors. I see an x minus 9 and a 9 minus x, which are opposite factors. Opposite factors always reduce to negative 1. Anything divided by its opposite is negative 1. So we have everything reduced. Let's just write the final answer. In the numerator, we've got an x times a negative 1, which will be negative x. And in the denominator, we've got a 2 multiplied by a 9 plus x. So there's a fine version of the final answer. I'm going to box that. There are other ways it could be expressed. We could write it with a negative sign out in front of the fraction, like this, the negative of x over 2 times 9 plus x. That's also acceptable. And then sometimes people like to distribute. So the 2 could also be distributed through the parentheses on the bottom. We could write the answer as the negative of x over 18 plus 2x. Those are all equivalent. They're all acceptable, simplified versions for the final answer there. Here's another example of how to divide two rational expressions. In this one, we have 6m squared plus 11mn minus 10n squared over 4m squared minus 25n squared divided by 3m squared minus 5mn plus 2n squared. So the first thing that I notice when looking at this is that our second expression here is currently not a fraction. It's not a rational expression. So we need to uh, put it over top of 1 to create it, to create a rational expression there. That's the first step that I'm going to do here. 6m squared, I'm copying the first rational expression exactly as is. 6m squared plus 11mn minus 10n squared over 4m squared minus 25n squared. So if we have a fraction, a rational expression, and we're trying to divide it by something that's currently not a fraction, we need to turn that second expression into a fraction. And that can be done by placing it over 1, because anything divided by 1 is equivalent to itself. Okay, so I just put a 1 underneath the second expression. Now we have two rational expressions that we can divide. The first step always is to multiply by the reciprocal of the second rational expression. So let's make it, I'm keeping the first rational expression exactly as is. No changes to the first fraction. Change the division to multiplication, and then take the reciprocal of the second rational expression, which means, taking the reciprocal means flipping the fraction. So it's 1 over 3m squared minus 5mn plus 2n squared. That's the first step of the process for dividing with rational expressions. Keep the first one the same. Change the division to multiplication. Take the reciprocal of the second rational expression. The next step, then, is to factor all numerators and all denominators. So for the first rational expression here, we have a trinomial. I'm looking to see if there's any common factor. Between a 6, and 11, and a 10, I don't think there is a common factor that we can factor out, uh, nor is there a common variable that we can factor out. So since it's a trinomial and there's no common factor, let's attempt to factor it by creating two sets of parentheses. So I'm thinking to myself, what times what could be 6m squared? And uh, that could be 3m times 2m or 6m times m. I'm going to try it first of all with 3m and 2m and see if this works. If that fails, we can always try 6m and m. To get 10n squared, the last term, I'm thinking what times what multiplies to give us 10n squared. That could be 5n times 2n, or perhaps 2n times 5n, or 1n times 10n. I'm going to try 2 and 5. I know 2n cannot go here because there'd be a common factor in the second factor if I placed a 2n there, and that's not possible since there was no common factor initially. So if 2 and 5 work, the 2n would have to go in the first factor, and then the 5n in the second factor. To see if it works, Let's uh, look at what we have here. 15mn would be the outer product, and 4mn is the inner product. So 15mn and 4mn can combine to give us 11mn. If we make the 15mn positive 15mn, and then the 4mn negative 4mn, we'll get positive 11mn for the middle term. And we also get the proper sign on the last term here. Negative 2n times positive 5n is negative 10n squared. So the numerator is factored. 
As for the denominator, uh, 4m squared minus 25n squared, it's two terms. There's nothing in common, but they appear to be, it appears to be a difference of squares. So let's create two sets of parentheses for factoring it. And differences of squares, just think what times itself is the first term. That would have to be 2m times 2m. And then what times itself gives us the second term. That would have to be 5n times 5n to get 25n squared. One of the signs is a minus and one of them is a plus whenever factoring a difference of squares. So that completes factoring in the numerator and denominator of the first rational expression. For the second rational expression, the numerator is 1, which we can't do anything with that, so just copy the 1. For the denominator, we've got a trinomial, and I'm thinking, is there a common factor among these three terms? I don't see one. There's no common factor from 3, 5, and 2, and there's no common variable that we can factor out. So once again, like we did in the first numerator, we'll need to set up two sets of parentheses and try to factor the trinomial. So I'm thinking what times what is 3m squared? That must be 3m times m. And then to get the last term, I'm thinking what times what is 2n squared? And I'm keeping an eye on the middle term of negative 5m, n. I'm thinking if I place the, let's see, the n here and the 2n there, let's see if this works. If we make both terms negative, the outer product would be negative 3m, n, and the middle product would be, the inner product would be negative 2m, n, m. And those would be combined to give us negative 5mn. So that's correct. And negative 2n times negative n is positive 2n squared. So it works this way. We factored everything completely. Then the next step of the process, if you're multiplying two rational expressions, once you get all numerators and denominators factored, is to write it as one rational expression, as one fraction. And then try to reduce. So let's just write it as one fraction here, one rational expression. We've got 3m minus 2n times 2m plus 5n times a 1, which we don't need to write. And then over top of 2m minus 5n times 2n, I'm sorry, 2m plus 5n times 3m minus 2n times m minus n. Now I'm looking for common or opposite factors to reduce. I see a 3m minus 2n. That's a common factor, so we can reduce both of those. And 3m minus 2n divided by itself simplifies to 1. Any other common factors? Let's see, 2m plus 5n. Yep, 2m plus 5n reduces with 2m plus 5n, and that also divides out to a 1. So for our result here, it looks like we have 1 in the numerator divided by 2m minus 5n times m minus n.